hello students welcome to today's session so this video is again in continuation with the topic which we have started few days back in regard to the isomerism where we talked about structural isomerism and in the structural isomerism the last topic was the tautomerism so seeing the length and breadth of this particular topic of tautomerism uh, we already have placed part one of tautomerism now in today's session we are dis going to discuss part 2 and subsequently I shall be passing part 3 and 4 as well because this particular topic got uh, repeated once again in the chapter of LDHs and ketones so there also it has a good application part. So what's the objective of today's session is first we would like to understand uh, these two things we already have done in the topic of uh, in, in the part one that is tautomerism and different types of tautomerism. But those who are joining me first time I just would give you a little bit of recall in regard to this in 2-3 minutes. Basically what is the endeavor of today's session we would be addressing ketoenol tautomerism in detail, stability of tautomers out of the ketoenol which is more stable and why and how percentage enol content can be checked conceptually and lastly we will be seeing the reaction based on individual uh, function group as keto and enol so these are the things which we are going to address let's go directly into the discussion so as regard to the tautomerism as i said in the part one that if you have a some functional group which is having a multiple bond along with polarity uh, where y is more electronegative than x and this type of a function group is attached to a carbon which is of the nature of sp3 and it is containing one hydrogen atom which we refer to as alpha hydrogen atom because it is present on a alpha carbon so this particular hydrogen has the tendency to move from this side to this side because this is delta negative this is delta positive and this uh, this sort of uh, functional isomerism shown by functional isomerism shown by these uh, compounds is called as tautomers so basically if I would say that this particular hydrogen has the tendency to go back into the this form as well so this hydrogen has the uh, you know it keep on fluctuating from this side to this side so the, these two individually we can say these two are functional isomers but these generally would not be isolated in the sense that they are in always in equilibrium with each other similarly if I would place this here this goes here this goes here keeping y more electronegative than x then what ne next structure do i get here is of the nature of this type so based on this structural feature we, we already have placed the part one let me give you a little idea just like if you have a carbonyl group attached to a alpha carbon which is containing one hydrogen and this carbon must be sp3 so this hydrogen can move to this side because you have a multiple bond and along with that there is a polarity in the bond so here what you would get a double bond here you would get OH so this is called as which we are going to discuss in length in today's class is ketoenol tautomerism similarly if this is delta positive this is delta negative and uh, same viewpoint we can take it here also so here you get the double bond and here you would get OH so this is of the type of nitroso oximato tautomerism which we have already discussed in the part one so you have to refer to that one similarly if i would move to this part delta positive delta negative here again it is sp3 and alpha hydrogen this hydrogen has the tendency to go to this side as a consequence you would get a tautomeric form of this nature here you would get a double bond here you would get one hydrogen so this is i mean and here you tend to get a double bond and on to the double bond there is a amine so I mean in amine tautomerism similarly you may go to this type of thing sino and this bond goes here this goes here so this resulting in a this type of a species so this is some of the tautomeric forms which we have already done now going into the details of ketoenol tautomerism as I said in the part one as well so if you have a alpha carbon so what is alpha carbon alpha carbon is the one which is directly attached to the functional group here the function group is a keto group and now if i would place one hydrogen here so this is this hydrogen i am referring to as alpha hydrogen so here you have two alpha carbons two alpha carbon atoms and uh, you have six alpha hydrogen atoms and all of these are chemically identical of same nature 
now the what the point is as i said in the previous slide as well this is delta positive this is delta negative so this hydrogen has the tendency to go to this side so this bond goes here this goes here as a consequence here comes the hydrogen so here you have to uh, have uh, obtained a structure that is in and ol so this becomes a keto enol tautomerism as i said many times that uh, these two if i critically would see these are functional isomers but they are always in a uh, uh, functional isomers they are always in a dynamic equilibrium with each other that's a different story who would have a greater percentage that's a different thing but they always would uh, you would if if i would say this is acetone if i have a bottle of acetone all the molecules of acetone would not be in this form some of the acetone molecules would be in the enolic form and similarly if you have this particular compound named as 123 prop uh, 1 in uh, 2 ol all the molecules of this compound would not be in this form some uh, some of them are in the form of keto group or as acetone now here in today's class we are going to address this point that which would be more stable so generally we say that keto form is more stable this is this is more stable than that of enol primarily because of the fact that um, uh, if i talk of uh, double bond co double bond versus c double bond c, uh, c the bond energy of c double bond o is more as compared to c double bond c principally because of the greater bond energy of c double bond o here if you would see a uh, fact uh, uh, taken from the uh, here you could see the greater stability of keto form here it is being marked here uh, greater stability of keto form than any carbonyl compound is because of the fact that the carbon oxygen bond is stronger than that of carbon carbon pi bond and here if you could see aldehydes uh, in the case of acetaldehyde it is almost 100% very less percentage of enol is there and acetone less than 1% is enol and cyclohexanone again so in general when you talk of keto forms keto form are generally more stable as compared to uh, as compared to the uh enolic form this particular thing we have taken uh, from the uh, book of solomon uh, very interesting book of organic chemistry which uh, has uh, endorsed this data that keto form is generally more stable that than that of enol form now coming on to the fact that how could you increase uh, if you have a keto form versus enol form there are some cases where enol tend to get predominated cases in which enol form predominate are first case is the case of activated methylene now what exactly do i mean by activated methylene so here if you have a simple aldehyde or a ketone this is a alpha carbon and the hydrogen attached is here is alpha hydrogen whereas if uh, this particular carbon on both sides if you have two co groups as a consequence of these two co groups these are two electron withdrawing groups so a fact of the matter is that if i just would write the pk value of a given aldehyde or ketone it ranges between 20 to 18 to 20 whereas in the case of activated methylene what is methylene ch2 group is methylene this is commonly called as methylene or methylene when two electron withdrawing groups get attached to the methylene group its pk value ranges between depending upon the type of functional group you have attached 9 to 11 uh if it is strongly withdrawing the pk value would decrease so what i am trying to say is activated methylene this particular hydrogen which is on to the ch2 has increased its acidity if i would just would write it like this that if i would take out h positive from both sides so this is the conjugate base of the first one this is the conjugate base of the second one this conjugate base is more resonance stabilized so since it is more resonance stabilized we will be saying this particular hydrogen is more acidic as compared to given aldehyde or ketone so activated methylene always would have a uh, greater pk uh, lesser pk value more acidity because of the fact there are two electron withdrawing co groups which would stabilize the uh, conjugate base more effectively as compared to the one which we get from the simple aldehyde or ketone now here the another thing is that now you if in this particular case this is a case of if i just would mark this part this is called as acetyl and if i just would see this one uh, acetone if one of the acetone hydrogen is being replaced by acetyl group we commonly would say this compound has to be acetyl acetone 
now in this acetyl acetone if i just would mark some carbon atoms these two are alpha carbon atoms and here i am referring to it as alpha dash so there are two alpha carbons which would contain six alpha hydrogen atoms which are identical in nature all of them are of same type whereas there is one alpha dash carbon which contains two alpha dash hydrogen atoms now these are more acidic these are more acidic as compared to the previous one so if i just would mark this as that if i would compare this alpha dash and this alpha so where uh, if i would say alpha carbon hydrogen bond alpha dash carbon hydrogen bond and if i just would write its acidity so this is more acidic obviously the hydrogen which is more acidic always would uh, you know uh, undergo enolization more aggressively or rap uh, um, rapidly as compared to the one which is less acidic so as a result of that what we would see that this hydrogen would undergo tautomerism just like here uh, you can take it to this side or this or to this side both are chemically identical situations so whichever way you want to go both are same so here you would get OH and here you get with the double bond now this particular enol which we get this enol tend to predominate upon keto because of the fact that in this case there is a hydrogen intramolecular hydrogen bonding can take place let me repeat it once again what we have just said that in this particular case of activated methylene where you come across acetyl isotone type of a species here you happen to get a stabilization factor this stabilization is because of intra H bonding it H bonding I should mark it here once that cases in which enol form predominates are the one where there is some stabilization factor stabilization factor in enol whenever there is a stabilization factor in enol it tend to bring in more uh, speedier enol content as compared to the keto form here many of the books write it is almost greater than 70% uh, or 76% if I would uh, say almost around 76% and this is almost about 24% but in the exams we, we would not be uh, going to see the exact percentages would not be asked so you would be uh, taking into consideration only this factor this is major this is minor so here what you have found is that um, the enol content got increased as compared to the keto one let me take one more example here the point is that although you have here is one alpha and this also is a alpha dash if i would say this alpha dash uh, is a sort of activated methylene because both of the sides you have a co group but here the point is this is coming from the keto part and this is coming from the aldehyde part so here you end up getting two types of enol content one you can get from here the one if if i just would uh, mark it uh, once again uh, showing you the hydrogen as well <coughs> here is this hydrogen so this hydrogen can move to this side as well like this or this can also move to this side as well so there are two types of enol uh, possible one enol which you can get here is of the type this way which on this side double bond and this uh, H would remain as such and CO and another one which we have marked with the green marker so the another one which we may get here is OH and here you have a CO and in both the cases what you are able to see here is in both the cases there is intra H bonding possible intra H bonding possible so this also can be possible this can also be possible but as long as something is not uh, categorically said about the fact uh, that uh, in what condition what reaction is it taking place in acidic basic medium high temperature low temperature we generally would say that the one which is more stable would be uh, taking um, uh, would predominate upon the other so here we will say this is more stable why is it more stable because of the fact it would have more hyc hyperconjugative hydrogens so because of the extent uh, more hyperconjugation because of this double bond because here you have 
these hydrogens as hyperconjugative hydrogens which are four in number here you have only two so we would be saying this is major this is minor and out of these two i shall be saying that this would be in greater quantity this is in lesser quantity and this is almost negligible so it is almost less than one percent so uh, around one percent it would be possible so this is the way you have to identify the fact that what tautomeric forms you can get from the activated methylene and which among this would be more stable when you have to talk about the stability you have to consider the thermodynamic stability which would come from the fact that which would have a more substituted alkene or more hyperconjugative hydrogens which would have the one which would have more hyperconjugative hydrogen would be more stable now another thing which you always have to mark that enol content uh, percentage enol content in a activated uh, methylene uh, changes with now here the point is that if as i said that the enol content tend to predominate upon keto when there is some stabilization factor like in the previous case that there is a hydrogen bonding but solvent do also play a role now if you have a polar solvent polar solvent like water polar solvent tend to decrease enol content whereas non polar solvent non polar solvent like chloroform or ccl4 this tend to increase the enol content the simple fact of the matter is that if you have water type of a species water would want to uh, you know be being polar it would uh, it would bring its uh, 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 positive dipoles around the keto group so it would stabilize the keto group more effectively with its uh, solvation because the delta positive of all the hydrogens of the water try to stabilize the co group whereas when there is a polar solvent because we just would want that enol content to have intra h bonding if it has to predominate but if you have a uh, polar solvent polar solvent tend to break these hydrogen bond and would try to bring water molecules more close to the co groups so if co group if co group tend to get more of water around it and resulting in more stabilization then the enol tend to shift into the keto form so make it a point if in case something would be asked in regard to the enol content the enol content tend to decrease with the polar solvent polar solvent tend to decrease whereas non polar solvent tend to increase second is the temperature when you have a high temperature and low temperature low temperature increases enol content because the hydrogen bonds would not break high temperature tend to decrease enol content because in that hydrogen bonds get broken with high temperature whereas co group would not be broken so this point you always have to uh, remember so this again is a uh, data taken from the jerry march uh, uh, book of organic chemistry which categorically show that in journal aldehydes and ketones if you have a simple one co group a compounds with one co group the enol content is very very less but in the case of activated methylene here is the acetyl acetone it becomes 80 and this 80 percentage can be decreased and increased with the uh, nature of solvent and the temperature so this always you have to mark it and similarly if you would bring ph group phenyl group instead of this methyl this further increases because of the fact there is stabilization coming because of the fact that there is phenyl group which would bring in resonance what i am saying is that if you have a phenyl group here in the activated methylene they are saying that the percentage enol content further get increased because of the fact here uh, you know uh, the there is double bond uh, which is in conjugation with co group and this would tend to increase the enol content into the system so this also you always have to keep it in mind second case is if in case there is stabilization because of the uh, aromaticity attainment in a uh, enolic form just like in this case that if this is the hydrogen this is the alpha carbon which is sp3 and this hydrogen if would move like this what you basically would get here is phenol and uh, the common name which we used to write is ph this is enol basically it is enol so phenol so this is almost near to 100 percent this would go to the side very favorably so because here the system would get a aromatic character so aromaticity predominated towards the 
phenol side so this always you always have to remember this particular example we might have taken in the last video also this is the alpha carbon this is the beta carbon and this is the gamma carbon so we would not tend to become fussy about the fact that there is always a alpha hydrogen which is going to enolate this carbon is on this hydrogen is present on a sp2 carbon which is and the bond energy of this is high this would not break so in fact in this case if i would break it and do the uh, sort of uh, enolization then i may get a double bond here and this would be highly unstable because this carbon has become sp and this always would want to become linear and this bond get broken so in fact here in this case it is the gamma hydrogen which undergoes enolization this gamma hydrogen on enolization bring in aromatic character so this bond goes here this goes here this goes here and this goes here wow this is very interesting so ultimately you basically have got a compound again of the type phenol so this again would predominate toward this side resulting in because of the fact there is a formation of aromaticity similarly if you have this sort of a compound here you have two two hydrogens all of these alpha hydrogens are chemically identical pick one hydrogen among all these and then do the enolization and if you do the enolization what you would uh, what you would get in this case is a formation of enol on the three oxygen resulting in a formation of this type of a structure and do let me know onto the comment section what is the common name of this particular compound so tell me the common name of this compound very important it is and this again would be almost near to 100 percent so it would be very very less similarly this is i mean and this again is having I am just showing one hydrogen among all these alpha carbons. Uh, here also you would see a enolization taking place a, uh, of the type here it would be enamine type of tautomerism. I mean enamine tautomerism. So here you would get a double bond NH2 here, NH2 here and NH2 here. So this is one of the case where here why it predominates this is the major one because of the fact it also have brought aromatic character into the compound so aromaticity brought this equilibrium forward third case could be where you have a steric hindrance where where there is a steric hindrance just like in this compound now this is a very bulky group mesetylene type of a group mesetylene mesetylene is a uh, organic moiety of this type this is mesetylene and one of the hydrogen of it if if one of the hydrogen we just would replace uh, from here and would bring it to the alpha carbon now this groups are very bulky groups so they would uh, tend to undergo steric hindrance because the angle here is 109.5 because being considering it has to be tetrahedral so this always would try to go to enolic form more rapidly because of the fact when you do the enolization now this uh, these two uh, this particular compound now would be and now has become planar now since it has become planar so the bond angle would be of 120 so this will relieve it from the steric hindrance so here the bond angle has now this has become planar and bond angle has increased to a uh, got increased by 120 here it is 109.5 so this bond angle increase would decrease the steric hindrance and the electronic repulsion so here also it predominates so here in all content tend to increase another case would be the where you have two co group adjacent to each other so this would create a pi bond pi bond repulsion so there is a pi bond there is a pi bond they tend to and the fact of the matter also here is that unlike this compound if i would take this particular compound in comparison here there here you have a single bond this can rotate here this particular bond cannot rotate so now see here what i can do here is that if i just would uh, this is the these hydrogens are alpha hydrogens or present on alpha carbon which all are chemically identical so if i just would do the enolization this bond goes here this moves here resulting in a formation of a type of a structure of this type so co 
double bond now has gone a little distant apart and here also you are able to see intra H bonding coming into play. So intra H bonding uh, come into play. So the pi pi repulsion, pi pi repulsion, pi pi repulsion got decreased in the enol content and H bonding intra H bonding further decreased the repulsion and increase the stability so this is more stable in this particular case so they may ask you that if i in this particular case this pi pi repulsion can be um, uh, can be changed by uh, 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 what you call it as conformational isomer so if you just would rotate this pi pi bonds got di distant apart now you can do its enolization of the type of this way if i do the enolization just hold on if i do the enolization oh ho, double bond o and here you have so in this particular case you would not get a h bonding so i just have taken one h from here so this h goes here this goes here so you would get a enol so out of these two if i just would mark one and two so one would have more percentage in whole content as compared to the second one. So although both CO groups are adjacent, but here in this case, the enol content is less. Enol content is less compared to the first one, because in the first one, this carbon-carbon um, bond rotation is not possible. So this again is a very interesting one. Uh, here I'm taking few examples to just confirm you this is the data taken from a organic book of a uh, very important book of Claydon. This is a organic book which in fact is justifying the fact that it is lot of lot of I have just taken two or one two example the book is containing lot many example you can refer to that there are some compounds there are some drugs in which the enol is being isolated the drug the shelf life of the drug is there in the uh, lab and you could see this particular uh, compound is a once uh, treatment of arthritis this particular drug this is containing a enol and this enol definitely would have h bonding creating here similarly this is a herbicide which is also having a h bonding available with the hydrogen on to this side like this so it is not that only the keto form primarily um, um, predominate in the equilibria there are some cases where enol also predominate lastly what we are supposed to tell you about is the chemical reactions so there are uh, some chemical reactions of the keto group keto just to and there are some reactions which are because of the enolic part because of the enolic part the major uh, the important one is the fericulite test so uh, this particular discussion you would get to understand better once you have done the topic of uh, LDHs and ketones and phenols from there you would get the understanding better let me repeat uh, let me do it once for you so uh, keto so this is sodium bisulfide test where nucleophilic addition tend to happen resulting in this particular crystalline salt if crystalline salt is obtained so this confirms the presence of keto group although this would be in equilibrium with enol the enol content is very very less because uh, the enol tend to predominate only in the cases which we which we have already talked about so again uh, this is uh, nucleophilic addition this results in the formation of cyanohydrin if cyanohydrin is being formed so that confirms the keto group similarly if in the case of phenol this is a, a fericulite test this is the most important test of the test of phenols and phenol is containing a enolic group so wherever you have a enolic part available with you enol present in a in a equilibria this enolic part always would give this fericulite test and this complex is having a violet color violet color if violet coloration happens to come or any intense coloration or intense coloration happen to come on addition of uh, uh, ferricol right to a equilibria that confirms the presence of enol or other way around is uh, enol can also be detected from the point that if you just would treat it directly with sodium because in the enol form the hydrogen tend to become more acidic in the sense that it got attached to the oxygen 
so since it got attached to the oxygen so this happens to give you uh, evolution of hydrogen gas can be uh, seen if evolution of hydrogen gas take place because it is highly combustible so this in a way shows the presence of enolic part because the uh, hydrogen which are attached to electronegative uh, heteroatoms tend to come out on reaction with sodium through a redox reaction and similarly lastly a bromine water test can also be a test for detection of phenol so here if you just would see uh, this bond goes like this and this bond this particular discussion i may take up in the next session as well in the session of uh, chemical reaction related to the uh, related to the and lastly it undergoes deprotonation and this alpha bromination of ldh and ketone this particular uh, thing we will we shall be doing in the upcoming session as well so bromine water test here the only endeavor because this i had done in very speedily so these are some of the reactions where you can uh, see the fact that uh, um, uh, this particular equilibrium of keto enol can be seen through the chemical reactions as well uh, i hope you have understood it and the next video what we shall be in the next uh, next session what we shall now is left with is that tautomerism is always catalyzed by acid and base so acid catalyzed base catalyzed tautomerism how does it play and resulting in a um, enole enol formation or enolate formation and we shall be seeing into the fact that how what is kinetic uh, enolate formation and thermodynamic stability of enolates and lastly we also would like to know the resumization and reactions based on the enol part or enolate part so this is the topic which we shall be discussing in the upcoming one to more videos thanks a lot have a nice day stay safe and take good care of yourself yes.